I had a bike that had hydraulic brakes on it. It was my Avidar C3 City, and they were like night and day as compared to mechanical brakes for a couple of reasons. They were so smooth and so positive that I wanted to try them out on, on this bike, which happens to be my Magicycle. And Magicycle sent me a hydraulic brake kit so I could share it with you. And then we'll talk about the differences in hydraulic brakes over these mechanical brakes. This is the kit they sent me. They sent me two new rotors. Um, this is the rear setup with the uh, brake lever and the hose and the um, brake caliper itself. And this is the front setup. This one is in two pieces because you have to feed the cable, or I mean the line, through the frame. That's probably going to be the hardest part of doing this. For this installation, I'm not going to be replacing these rotors because these rotors actually only have uh, less than 200 miles on them. So I'm just going to leave them on. If I was going to replace the rotors, I would have to pull the wheel out, um, just like if you're going to um, re uh, change an inner tube, and that's all there is. And then there's just six bolts that hold it on. That's it. Uh, front And the front one's even easier because there, there's no chain attached up front, so the front wheel just drops right down, uh, disc and all. So if I want to change the rotors or when it comes time to change the rotors, that won't be hard. But for today's video, I'm just going to change the brakes themselves. And I'm going to start right here in front of me because this is the hardest one with the line that has to run up through this frame. I have to figure out how I'm going to do that. Is it I hope to gain from this? I'll go into that right now. There are a couple of things. Um, number one is the hydraulic brakes are smoother to apply because you don't feel the drag of the cable when you pull the, the uh, brake lever. It's just real smooth. Uh, the other thing is that you, you never have to adjust hydraulic brakes. They're, they're self-adjusting. And with mechanical brakes, I usually end up adjusting these every couple of weeks or so. And I, you know, anyways, you got to do that. And the third thing that made me want to do this is the difference in how much pressure you have to put on those brake levers. Because when I'm coming down a hill on this heavy bike, I have to use all four fingers on the brake levers, let me put my tool down there, to pull. And you got to pull pretty hard with mechanical brakes. With um, hydraulic brakes, I should be able to keep two fingers on the handlebars still and operate them, you know, with just two fingers. So I know that my other hydraulic brakes on the one bike I had that had them, they were like that. They, they exert, it's easier to apply heavy braking when you need to. Basically, I'm gonna loosen the cable here and take the cable out. And then there's two Allen bolts that hold this caliper on. So let me get that part done. Now you can see that the mounting holes in the, in the brake caliper are elongated and that's so you can get it adjusted perfectly so the pads line up with the disc and don't rub on the disc. Okay, the old one is off and uh, now I just need to pull this cable out, but I'm gonna to try to use this cable to help me thread the new uh, hydraulic line through the frame. I haven't figured out how I'm gonna do that yet, but I'm gonna try. First thing I need to do is cut this little crimp sleeve off the end of the mechanical brakes. so that I can slide this off so I can get this up back up through the frame. There's a grommet here that uh, went in that uh, went to the into the frame to protect the wires from being ab abraded the cables here. So I pulled that out to make it easier to pull this brake cable through here. Okay, now before I pull this the rest of the way through, I want to find some way to fasten this to that hydraulic cable that's got to follow it. See what I can do. When I say hydraulic cable, I mean hydraulic hose. And it feeds from the bottom to the top. Here's the new caliper that goes on down here. That looks pretty straightforward. Just like the uh, mechanical one with the same adjustments on it. And it's all set to go there. This now is another story. Hmm. I'm going to try to tape this, see how far I get like that. Tape it and wrap it. And then be very careful with it. Only got to go about two feet. 
Might as well be two miles, though, if it doesn't go right. Okay, now if you'd please just cross your fingers for me, we'll get on with this. Oh, there it is coming out the top. Woohoo! Before I go any further, I'm going to remount this uh, new caliper down here and align it, and then I'll continue hooking up the top side. Up here, I did have to remove my hand grip. I had to loosen one Allen, Allen uh, screw and disconnect the cable here to remove my throttle. I had to disconnect this electric cable here on the brake. This is the one that when you apply the brake, it automatically disengages the motor on the bike. And then loosen this up and of course, this brake cable I've already unthreaded, so now the brake comes off. So now it's ready for the new brake. Okay, I'm at the stage where I bleed the brakes and I had to uh, backtrack a little bit. And when I put this front brake lever together for the rear brake, I made a mistake and there's a little brass ferrule and it's beveled on one side and I put it in the way you would normally do a brass ferrule with the bevel facing into the unit itself on whatever you're doing <laughs> and on this one it's backwards you put it in the other way so i screwed that up and luckily i didn't totally destroy that brass ferrule so i looked it up on youtube on how to do this uh, install these tectro brakes and doggone it if that guy didn't make the same exact mistake and show me correct and show correcting the mistake also there's a little allen head plug in the end of the brake line the one that i fed up through the frame and I don't see that in the instructions, which is extremely small print anyway, but um, a one diagram of that little setup would have uh, gone a long way for me, I'll tell you. Okay, I'm almost done back here. This is still loose, so I'm just getting ready to tighten it down. And basically to adjust this so that the pads are centered on the rotor, all you do is squeeze the brake lever and hold it while you tighten down these bolts, which are loose right now, but I'm going to tighten them down and that automatically centers it like that. I know everything's supposed to be torqued on a bike, but I've been mechanicking since I was like 16 years old, so I can kind of tell when I got it about right. There, here, did you hear the click click in my wrist? <laughs> Well, that ought to do that right there. Now, and the main thing is you can spin the wheel and listen to see if the, if the uh, brake pads are dragging or not. And these aren't. The rear's installed, and that was the hardest one. The fronts will be easy compared to this one. And this would have been easy, too, if I wouldn't have screwed up that ferrule, but it's all right. Okay, this front brake is really easy because I don't have to run it up through the uh, tube of the frame and it's already all assembled with the brake line. I don't even think I need to bleed this one. If I do, it'll just be to minor just to get any air bubbles out, but I'm not expecting to even have to do that, but we'll see. Is you gotta get these grips off to get the old brake lever off. The new brake levers have, uh, they're split, so they come apart like this. This one's a clamp and it doesn't come apart, so it's gotta get slid off the end. Ugh. <laughs> All right, I showed you the last split second of that, but that wasn't easy. <laughs> okay, this one is a lot easier <laughs> to take off. Okay, new one going on. Tighten it down temporarily here, just until I get it positioned right. Well, I ran into a small glitch. I raised these handlebars up on this Magicycle so I would have a more upright riding position. And uh, that made it so that the 
kit as it came from Magicycle for the front brakes, the, the hydraulic line is too short by a few inches. So I went down to my local bike shop and bought a hydraulic line kit and I'm going to make my own hydraulic line here and get this finished up. This is a kit I bought. It's the same company that made the brake system that I'm installing. There's basically just three things on the end of the line. There's this little tiny piece that goes inside the line. There's the brass ferrule that goes on top, only one certain way, I'll tell you. And then there's the uh, ferrule nut that uh, slides over it and, and crimps this brass ferrule. This brass ferrule has a bevel on one side and it's flat on the other side. The left side that you're looking at here is flat and the right side has a bevel. The bevel goes away from the brake caliper towards the line, not towards the brake caliper as you might think. The bevel goes away from the brake caliper. First slide on the things that need to go on the cable like this uh, little uh, ring here that protects the cable. Then the nut. Then that little brass ferrule with the bevel facing away from the caliper towards the line. Then after that you can push this fitting up inside the cable. Now I gotta, you gotta kind of put it against a hard surface. There's a tool they make, but you can put this up against a real hard surface and lean on it and, and it'll go in. After you do that, slide that brass ferrule all the way down to the bottom like that. Fit it into the, in this case, it's the um, upper brake lever unit. Then slide that nut down and start the threads very, very carefully. Make sure it's not cross-threaded. And then tighten it down securely. Um, after, after you get this all installed and bled, if you see a leak, tighten it down like a quarter turn at a time until you don't get any more leaks. When you're all done, this plastic piece, which only goes at the upper brake lever, it's just, uh, it just kind of protects the cable when, you're, when it's twisting up there by where your hand is. That slides down over that nut. It fits over that nut right there. Take the brake pads out before you start so you don't get, have any chance at all of getting any brake fluid on the brake pads because that would destroy them. So that's what I'm doing right now is taking the brake pads out. It's a simple matter to get the brake pads out. You just pull a cotter pin, straighten the cotter pin out, pull the pin, and then these two little pads just come, just come right out. Nice and clean and I want to keep them that way. Might as well talk to you a little bit about this while I'm doing it. It's just a matter of buying a brake bleeding kit and then gently pumping the proper brake mineral oil back and forth through the system until all of the bubbles disappear. It's a lot like bleeding brakes on a car. Pretty much the same thing, only probably a little easier. Uh, this is your brake reservoir up here. When you pull the plug off, there's a little O-ring, and if you don't get that O-ring out, it makes it so that the brake bleed kit won't fit properly. So you got to kind of pop that little O-ring out too. I got it on the end of the screw there now. Of course, the brake bleed kit has its own O-ring on it. Then all you do is you compress this syringe like this. And while I'm compressing this one down, the one on the bottom will start rising up. A lot of air coming out of there because it's an empty line. And then you just gently push these two syringes back and forth until no more air comes out.
One thing I should have mentioned is you need to put a little wedge in here of some kind. I'm using a wire nut just to hold the brake pads from squeezing in together like this. So that just kind of holds those pads apart. Okay, I pulled that syringe off and I'm putting the plug back in. You can see it's dripping and that's why you don't want to have those brake pads in there. Okay, lock that down. I just need to fix the top. And I want to make sure this is good and clean. I'll just spray some brake clean on this before I put the pads back in. Okay, being careful not to get any grease or oil on those pads, making sure my hands were clean too, so I didn't get any grease or oil on them. I put the cotter pin back in, and now I'm bending the top of the cotter pin back over again. And now this uh, caliper is ready to go back on here and get bolted down. The new bolts have a, a lock tight on them, so they go in kind of hard, but that makes it also so that they don't come out easily. <laughs> they stay in there where they belong. Now I'm holding the brake with my left hand and that centers it on this uh, front rotor. Then I'll try these, I'll tighten these up and then I'll try it out. I'm also looking for leaks now. While I hold pressure on this. But it's not rubbing on anything. Seems to be working. So yeah, the brakes are smoother, firmer, a lot less pressure. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope I taught you something. Uh, I'm gonna enjoy these. Anyways, please like, share, and subscribe and we'll see you around.